welcome to this, our virtual celebration of courage. My name is Paige Tinkham and I'm the president of Ascend Justice Board of Directors. We are so excited to see everyone who is logged in and watching. Even though we couldn't be together physically as we normally are, it's exciting that we can still be together online. Tonight, we're gonna celebrate our first year as Ascend Justice and share stories of the clients who've been impacted by our work. We're gonna honor our two Champions of Justice, Ashley Cano and Mary Catherine Gibbs, two attorneys who have helped our clients feel hopeful and confident about their future. We're also gonna share how we've moved to providing services to the individuals and families who need us the most remotely in response to the pandemic and how you can support this critical work that we're doing. For 31 years, we have been helping people who are in crisis, not just during a pandemic, but every day. With your support, we will continue to be here for the next 31 years for clients like Latasha and Bawana, who you will hear from later tonight. Instead of operating our normal walk-in emergency clinic, we are on call nearly every day to respond to requests for emergency orders of protection remotely. We assist clients in preparing the necessary paperwork via phone and then coordinate with the courthouse so the client can have a remote hearing via Zoom. While most of our daily casework has been on hold due to the court closure, our focus has shifted almost entirely to making sure survivors of domestic violence can still access the court. From my dining room table that over the past two months has served as my home office and most recently as the event headquarters for this year's virtual celebration of courage. While planning this year's event is a lot different than I expected it to be, it has been inspiring to hear how our staff has changed how they deliver services to make sure we are still helping those who need us most. Along with hearing from clients who've been directly impacted by the work we do, thanks to the support of our many generous donors. Along with hearing from Mary Catherine and Ashley, our 2020 Champions of Justice, about what inspires them to be involved with us on justice. I'm here in my dining room. This is where I have written lots of emails and been on the phone for hours and hours and generally gotten my work done since March. At the same time I'm doing that, we have a seventh grader, a fourth grader, and a preschooler all doing e-learning at the same time. It's been a whirlwind, but the work is getting done.
Hello, my name is Bojana Ilic. Uh, I am a Chicago-based artist. I have a son who is 12 year old who lives here with me in Chicago. I grew up in Serbia and moved to Chicago 13 years ago. I was in an abusive relationship start, that started off as a verbally abusive and then end up, ended up as a physically abusive. So I was physically um, attacked. After reaching to the police and, you know, reporting the, the incident, uh, I needed somebody who is going to actually legally present me at a court. So I reached out to a Saint Justice. So I worked with uh, Ashley Olson from Ascent Justice and she needed to walk me through the, uh, on, on one side, emotional part and, and healing part of that whole situation. She was more of a, not only a legal service provider, she was amazing support in, in the whole whole situation. I think that building a community that is strong, we can actually make change instead of putting a band-aid on something. incredibly sort of um, humbled um, and, and flattered and a little bit embarrassed just because I know that there are tons of volunteers who do wonderful things for Ascend Justice and you know, just feel like I'm doing what everybody else is doing. <laughs> what motivated me is just, I mean, the mission and, and the community of, of people that they serve. Um, I mean, I have been, it's interesting, after I started volunteering, um, my own personal life um, was impacted by domestic violence, so that made me want to um, volunteer even more. I mean, I was already volunteering, but it just sort of strengthened sort of my, my drive and my desire to, to help people who are, are in those kinds of situations. If you're not a lawyer, um, having to go to court, having no idea what you're doing, um, and then on top of it, being faced with a very difficult situation at home, sort of that, that combination of factors, I can't even imagine what that must feel like. And just the ability and opportunity to help in just this very small way um, to hopefully, you know, help people get out of really bad situations and move forward is just, I mean, that's the most rewarding, rewarding part for me. And I'm honored. You guys are so nice to think of me. I really, uh, I, it was just really gratitude that, that um, you would think of me in that way. I really appreciate that.
friend of mine who I met when we moved to Chicago, um, uh, Jen Fitzgerald, was, uh, is also an attorney in Chicago. And she, uh, at the same time that I started talking to her about looking for pro bono opportunities, she said, well, I'm going to go do this training for um, the domestic violence court in Chicago. Would you like to go? And I'm like, well, sure. <laughs> and so I went with her <laughs> and it worked out. I think it's um, getting to see the faces of the victims after they've gotten their emergency protective order um, and to see the relief on their face at that time, to be able to help somebody. You know, it's a, it's a lot of paperwork and they have gone through what is normal, what is often a tragic situation and it's really difficult for them to sort of think through all of that paperwork. And so they're just, so, they're so thankful. It's that, that's what's in it for me. Hi, my name is Latasha. I'm the proud mother of two boys and a bonus daughter, and I live in Chicago. I was not feeling safe within myself, and so I had taken my son to the hospital, and I gave them my husband's phone number, all his contact information, let him know that they were not, you know, answering the phone and and then when I let the people at the hospital know I guess they like called the police and was saying like that I left my child there essentially DCFS called all that like I think it was neglect Whatever they termed it, I didn't feel like that that was true. I knew it wasn't true. I felt like in a moment of, I guess, what I can consider crisis in my own life, um, that my truth was not being heard with DCFS. My only intention was to protect my child, and I felt like by having the support of your organization and the lawyer that represented that I did have that support and somebody to advocate. I felt like I had somebody to really carry out the truth for me. So I just thank them for redefining a moment in time in my life that could have changed my life for the, for the worse. It came out better. Good evening, and welcome to the Ascend Justice Celebration of Courage, and incidentally, welcome to my living room. We're grateful to everyone who is joining us tonight for this online celebration. I'm especially happy that this platform will allow us to reach many people for whom distance and scheduling have previously been barriers to participation. We're so glad to have you. The Ascend Justice Celebration of Courage is our annual opportunity to pause and reflect on our progress and victories. And it's typically a pretty fun party, if I do say so myself. As we've planned for this year's event, I've come to realize that in most years, our job is merely to create the conditions for festivity. A beautiful setting, music, good food and drink, but it's you, our guests, who are the heart of the celebration. The gathering of so many supportive, passionate, and sharply dressed allies is what has made the Celebration of Courage a success for so many years. And this year is different. It's different for us and it's different for the people we serve. 
Each year, our celebration exists in the delicate balance between festivity and the reality of loss. We need celebration. We need ways to express gratitude and hope. But for us, and especially in these times, celebration cannot be a way to obscure injustice and suffering. Whether it's domestic violence, child welfare system involvement, or COVID-19, we must be brave enough and compassionate enough to face our current realities. What are the current realities for the people Ascend Justice serves? I don't think there's any doubt that an increase in the incidence and severity of domestic violence is one of the collateral consequences or side effects, if you will, of this pandemic. Domestic violence thrives when people are isolated. Isolation is both cause and effect of abusive relationships. Today, social isolation is a necessary and sensible response to a pandemic, but it also cuts off survivors from their communities, from law enforcement, and from their support networks. In this environment, sources of safety, a shelter, a counselor, a friend, or the court are all reframed as perilous potential sources of infection. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the economic impact of the virus. Our clients clean motel rooms, work in daycares, and cook in restaurants. These jobs, while never particularly secure, are a crucial part of their financial independence and safety. A loss of income can prevent separation or force survivors to consider returning to an abusive relationship. These realities are not lost on the people who commit abuse. It is almost as though the virus is acting as an accomplice in the violence. And while the increase in domestic violence has been covered in the media, our family defense clients have been impacted as well. As a general rule, the pandemic has forced parents to choose among a range of suboptimal options. However, for families who are already living in the shadow of DCFS investigation or the threat of an investigation, the choices take on more significance. And what is the right answer? To maintain employment by leaving children in the care of an older sibling because there are no other options or risk unemployment and homelessness because you don't report for work. Because we are courageous enough to face these realities, we are more prepared to act. Sarah Galoon's client, Missy, called her on Easter Sunday with that very dilemma. With schools closed, she didn't have childcare, but if she didn't go to work, she might lose her job. Which option is best for her kids? And which choice was best given her family's previous involvement with the child welfare system? Sarah was there, providing her best guidance in an untenable situation. Nebula Lee received a similar call from Angel. Angel is an undocumented mother of three who is recovering from a traumatic brain injury resulting from her husband's violence. She works as the home health care aide for elderly people, but she reported to Nebula that she did not have adequate, adequate protective equipment to do her job. Nebula and our client support coordinator, Carolina Gallo, responded, helping Angel source PPEs so both she and her vulnerable patients are safe. And when local survivors of domestic violence were forced to travel to court during a stay-at-home order to get an order of protection, Ascend Justice helped lead the advocacy to permit remote emergency hearings. We've since helped over 70 people access remote order of protection hearings. And it's worth noting that many of these petitioners are elderly or have health risks that would have made travel outside their home dangerous. Like our celebration, these victories look and feel a little different right now. But these differences do not detract from their impact and our experience. In the past couple of months, I've attended a preschool graduation, a bar mitzvah, and a retirement party, all online. And it's interesting. Who shows up to a party when there are no cocktails, no dancing, no cake? Those are your people. And you are our people, our sponsors, our funders, our board, Young Professionals Board, family, friends, and our awesome, dedicated staff. You are brave enough and compassionate enough to face these realities with us, and wise enough to recognize victories, even in challenging times. Sometimes we have to look a little harder, but I see them every time we facilitate a remote hearing, every time we mail a client a green card, every time we help survivors and families heal, 
each time I see hope. If you see these as victories, and if you want to join us in creating hope, please consider making a donation. Your support, now more than ever, makes our work possible. Thank you.